Welcome back to our talk about effective networks of universal design for learning. We talked about how we can recruit students' interest in online courses. Now, Michelle and I will be talking a little bit about how to promote self-regulation in, in online courses in our students. Michelle, can you give us some examples of how you can encourage um, your students' self-regulation strategies and how to help them when it comes to time management maybe and how to succeed in the course? Jen? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that when um, students come to particularly the online, um, you know, courses in an online modality, they may uh, have some fears about what the course, um, uh, what course expectations are. They um, don't necessarily interact face-to-face -face with, with the instructors. And so while it provides a certain flexibility, their own um, sense of confidence and their own self-regulation might be a little bit off in this modality. So I um, try to use the course materials to really guide their understanding, not only of course expectations, but also of a pathway um, you know, for academic success. So for example, uh, I really uh, try to clearly articulate course expectations. Um, I try to make sure that there's not a lot of room for interpretation as to what they need to do, when they need to do it, how they, you know, how they can um, achieve some academic success. Um, I have an ungraded syllabus quiz, which sort of sounds funny, but it drives them to think about the syllabus as a written document in the course, and so, you know, a, a really um, deliberate roadmap for the course. Um, I use grading rubrics. I think they're important so that students understand from a developmental perspective maybe where I see them and, and where they they could go, you know, if they'd like to improve or achieve a different kind of outcome. Um, and I also post a, a, a plethora of announcements in, in courses, uh, the same way I would in a face-to-face -face classroom. So this week we'll be discussing X, Y, Z, or maybe a reminder of the learning goals. Here are some of the learning activities. This is why we're doing what we're doing. You know, we'll see you in discussion. I'm I'm actively um, engaged in and present in discussions. So it's really to model a lot of behavior for students, but then also use those course um, documents as ways to frame um, course expectations for students. Now that you're you're talking about your your announcements, I'm also posting an um, an announcement or some advice from previous students. I always at the end of the semester try mm -hmm. to uh, try to ask or I ask students for some advice for future students how to how to be successful in the scores and what to do. And then I collect them, and then the next semester I just post an announcement with just some collection of of um, of relevant or good ones, good. Um, tips from, from previous students because they are the one who are going through it. I'm just on the other side of it. So I'm not really, my experience is not the same as theirs, but since they are in the course, they have the firsthand experience. So many times people tell me that the, uh, the tips from, from my previous students were actually very helpful because usually they give very detailed advice. So by the end of the week, you should be done your reading so that you can participate in the discussion and have meaningful time in the discussion. So that, that um, strategy seems to be helping my students when it comes to time management and how to organize their time when they're studying. And also when you were talking about, about the syllabus, and uh, about the expectations, I have in my in one of my courses, I have a expectations discussion that I find quite interesting. Um, every at the beginning of the semester, because each instructor has different expectations and different requirements for the course, I ask students to participate in the expectation discussion where I'm asking them. So how exactly do you see yourself in this course? What do you have to do to be successful? How, how are you planning on managing your time? So basically a game plan for, for the whole semester because my course is um, quite um, heavy and there's something due every week. So they have to, you know, I, they have to stay on their toes a lot and just move around. And um, the success seems to be a uh, moving target for some of them. So when they have expectations clear at the beginning of their, of their semester, it seems to be much smoother for them. The experience much, seems to be much smoother. And I also in the discussion include some scenarios that might happen in the course. Let's say one of the scenarios might be, so the student participates in the discussion but posting one um, 
post and then checks out of the discussion. Based on the rubric that I gave you, what is the grade that the student will get? So they will give them a very specific idea. Okay, well, maybe I should not just post once and then disappear because it will, um, my grade will, will suffer from, from this kind of action. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do that. And um, I, I'm pretty sure that students are learning from them, even though um, a lot of the students, their first stab at it is incorrect. But then again, that tells me that um, it's necessary. It tells me that we do need to talk about it because what I think is clear and laid out well might not be. So then I go constantly back and forth and, and rewrite the rubric to make it clearer. So it helps me as well as it helps them uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to time management and um, some self-regulation. I'm also using an example of a good, good paper. Some of my papers, um, all of my papers have very similar strategy or all, all of my assignments have similar, similar layout rather. So just to give them an idea of a good paper, um, I, would, I would pose an example and then they can look at how it's organized, um, how the citations work, um, what's the length, what's the appropriate language, what's the level of formality that, um, that the scholarly writing should have in it. So that, that seems to be, to be working and I do get feedback from my students that um, they're very glad that the example was there because it helped them guide their decision making when it comes to how they, um, how they turn in their assignments or the direction they should be, they should be going. Do you have any other um, self-regulation strategies that you want to, you want to add? Anything else? No, no, I think we covered them all. I really like your idea of using student voices to guide other students. I think that's, um, I think it's really smart and um, thoughtful and effective. Uh, that the sort of that leveraging the peer group, you know, student cohort to advise other students. You I mean you're right. Uh, my you know, my ideas of what might um, thoughtfully guide a student, um, you know, could work, but uh, why not get something uh, really sort of, you know, from the course, about the course, by students in the course. I think that's great. I will have to steal that, and I encourage others to do so. <laughs> great. Thank you very much, Michelle, for your time. See you, um, see you again. Yes, you will. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>